The Vision High School Sports Beat is brought to you by the nine locally owned Vision Automotive Group dealerships from Buick, GMC, Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, Ram, Hyundai, Ford, Kia, and Nissan, with locations in Webster, Henrietta, Greece, Penfield, Fairport, and Canandaigua, online at visionauto.com. Hello everyone and thanks for joining us at the Vision Automotive Group's High School Sports Beat. I'm Bill Pucko. Every week at this time we take a comprehensive look at sports in Section 5 and Monroe County and we begin with our honor roll of high school teams. At number 3, the Pittsburgh men cross country team. The Vikings are the top ranked Class B boys team in the state. Bright is number 2, HFL is 5th. At number 2, McQuaid Volleyball. Knights are 6-0 and, oh, and beat previously undefeated Aronicoid in 4 games. Dane LeClaire at 21 assists. McQuaid has a game at unbeaten Victor next week. And in the number one slot, the Gananda Girls soccer team. The Panthers are 10-0. Julia Mahoney and Kaylin White have combined to score 25 goals. The team has only surrendered four. Which brings us to Spencerport, where the star player on the football team was burned out. Literally. Here's Pat Fahey. This is where Spencer Port running back Taj Edi used to live. On a mid-August afternoon, first responders were called to a home at 99 Queensland Drive, to a home engulfed in flames. I was actually at the gas station putting gas in my car, and then I got a phone call from my mom, and then my heart, I just went, I froze, and I just drove home, and I couldn't believe what I saw. It was hectic. My house was in flames. It was the neighborhood. It was all watching. Mad fire trucks. Firefighters battled for nearly an hour before bringing the blaze under control. The second floor collapsed into the first as flames tore through Taj's home. Heat from the fire melted the siding of the home next door. It was a total loss. Yeah, I lost plaques. I lost trophies. I lost my jersey, everything. My football equipment, all of it. Everything, all my clothes, shoes, everything. Taj's family escaped unharmed. All this just five days before his senior season was to begin with Taj's other family, the Spencerport Ranger varsity football family. Just like in the game, but let's make a throw. Passing back up. Halt back up. A tight-knit group of 40, the team motto, what else? Family. And to the coaches, players, and parents of the varsity squad, family means something. Yeah, I mean, all the kids came together and surrounded uh, around him and his family. And, um, you know, we did some things raising money, and so did the school, the athletic department, our parents' club, um, as well as the uh, Spencer Port, uh, Sports Booster Club. But uh, our kids are always, um, you know, family's our motto. And sticking together through times of adversity is something we talk a ton about. So, you know, our kids really rallied around him and his family. Yeah, absolutely. We always take care of our family. So uh, it was a flurry of phone calls when we found out what happened to Taj and his family. Um, and it was a former member, too, because his uh, cousin, Sean Robinson, is a former ra uh, Ranger also. So we mobilized the funds together um, from the Sports Booster Club fund, and we gave that to the team or to the family the next day. Then a series of fundraisers, donations from alumni, an anonymous donor doubled the bottom line with a dollar for dollar matching gift. I was at work, I was one morning actually, and then they got my, my friend Landon to hand me an envelope and there was a bunch of money in it. I was, well it was a bunch of gift cards. I, at first I was shocked, but then I thought like, this is my family, this is, like it doesn't seem out of the character for them to do. This season, Ranger football means so much more than wins and losses on the field. It's about sticking together through life's toughest trials. When I'm out here, I don't really think about anything else besides football. 
And uh, it just being on a team, I don't even think of these as my teammates. Like they're, they're all my brothers. We think of ourselves as family, and they just they help me a lot. It could happen to anybody at any time. It could happen to any of us, you know, fluke thing, the house goes down, you lose everything, and you want to know your community and your family is behind you. And that's what we wanted to give the Edie family, is know that we were behind them and helping them out when we were thinking about them in this time of need. Number 30, Todd Edie on the carry. In week one of the season, Taj suffered a broken left arm, which did little to slow down the shifty tailback. A key to the Ranger double wing offense, Edie rushed for over 550 yards and eight touchdowns in his first four games of the season. You know, it feels great in his senior year, you know, I'm doing it for, I'm not doing it for myself actually, I do it for them every day. The Spencerport football family faced adversity. The family was tested by fire and won the battle. For the Vision Automotive Group's High School Sports Beat, I'm Pat Fahey. A dog's eye view of the McQuaid Invitational Cross Country Meet when the Vision Automotive Group's High School Sports Beat continues. Welcome back. Thanks for joining us at the Division Automotive Group's High School Sports Beat. I'm Bill Pucko. Time now for our honor roll of high school athletes. Top three for the week just passed. And at number three, we have Adam Dake of the Victor Boys Volleyball Team, who had 30 assists in a three-game win over Penfield in the battle of undefeated teams, the Blue Devils, and 9-0. At number two, the Smith Twins of the Webster Schrader Girls Volleyball Team, Allie and Amber, combined for 39 kills in a four-game match win over defending state champion Baldwinsville. And at number one, the amazing Josh Mack. Pittsburgh football, Josh ran for 306 yards and scored five touchdowns against Hilton. I'll bet he turns up in our Plays of the Week countdown this week. Which brings us to Genesee Valley Park and the McQuaid Invitational Cross Country Meet and Dog Show. It's a who's who in cross country. Some 7,000 school-aged runners from all across New York State annually converge on Genesee Valley Park for the ever-growing McQuaid Invitational, now in its 50th year. While its status as a major running event is unquestioned, it has also become a popular venue for area canines to see and be seen. It's showtime. These are the dogs of the McQuaid Invitational. Our name is Miley. She's five years old. We got her at Scottsville Veterinarian Hospital as a rescue dog. It's a uh, part lab, spaniel mix, great dog. <laughs> what, what's, uh, what's the level of greatness? What, what does she do that's so great? Uh, she's just like having a lab, only she's only 30 pounds. Easy to travel with, great demeanor, great with kids. Just a good natured dog. Just under 12, just under 12. This isn't anything like the Westminster Dog Show where the blue bloods hang. Dogs of the McQuaid Invitational are generally an unpretentious group. Rescue dogs own a foothold here, like Champ, a year old pit bull lab mix. He was neglected. He was chained up outside and got fed kind of when they felt like feeding him. So he just really appreciates the love and affection that much more, so he's got a lot of love to give. Were you looking for a rescue dog, so it's the kind of thing you like to do? Um, we actually rescued him. My boyfriend's mother worked with the rescue, and she was fostering him, and we fell in love with him. Champ's new best friend is Picasso, a distinctive-looking six-year-old English Springer Spaniel and standard poodle mix. He loves kids, he loves families. Obviously he's here in the park with all these runners and he's having a, he's having a blast. Big believer in a mix? Uh, you know, it worked for my wife because uh, she has allergies and he doesn't shed. So that's what worked for us. There's Charlie. He is a Bichon and he's seven and a half years old. He still thinks he's a puppy. <laughs> Special talents? Um, not many, other than just being generally cheerful. 
and Rosie, a 10-month-old Jack Russell Border Collie mix, who's struggling through obedience school. They're always happy to see you. They always think you're the best thing. You're their world. The whole family can be mad at me when I come home and my dogs aren't. They think I'm the best, <laughs> and I think they're the best too. Talent is at a premium here. We really weren't sure what to make of Barkley, a golden doodle. He smiles when he's in trouble. We call it his cheesy grin, and what he does is he curls his lip up because he knows he's in trouble, and he's like, oh, I'm so cute, don't yell at me. <laughs> yeah, we call it his cheesy grin. Dogs are very much a staple here. Paul Plee, who provides audio services to the track beat, and a little R&R &R for the critters. I grew up on a farm and I know that animals need water, especially on a hot day like this. So I've been doing this for about 10 years now and I've always brought water for the animals because folks don't realize how long of a day it is and you know, you just don't think. And so I put it out for them. Finally, we offer the winner in the largest lap dog classification. Meet Maisie, a four-year-old Great Dane. They take up a lot of room, but they're, they're lap dogs, and they love the couch. So they sleep a lot, but, you know, again, they love kids, and they're really, uh, really docile animals, you know, really friendly. Any special abilities? No. Sleeping. <laughs> Sleeping. Also of note, Nick Neemtu of Webster Thomas High School and Alex Cooper of Rush Henrietta ran the fastest local times at the McQuaid Invitational Cross Country Bee. When we return, we have our top five high school football plays of the week and coming up an inside look at the sport of field hockey when the Vision Automotive Group's high school sports beat continues. Welcome back to the Vision Automotive Group's high school sports beat. I'm Bill Pucko. It is time now to check in on the top five high school football plays of the week, brought to you in fabulous HD by our friends at Varsity Media. Here are our football plays of the week. Section five, and we start off with Churchville playing at HFL. For the Cougars, Dan Hart passing to Paul Tobin and the Red Sea Parts. Where's the defense? That's a 95 yard scoring play. Hart's 13 for 25 passing, 253 yards. That was one of his three touchdowns. HFL wins it by a 44-27 score. At number four, Hilton playing against Pittsburgh. This is the amazing Josh Mack. He had a 306-yard day, and that was 80 of them. 25 rushing attempts, 306 yards. Josh Mack, Pittsburgh wins, scoring 54 points to Hilton's 29. At number three, it is Spencer Port playing at Edison for the Rangers. Zakaya Owens, the 52-yard pick. Nice run on the return and watch him stretch for the end zone. And he's in. Spencer Port with a 35 0 win. At number two, U Prep playing against Greece Arcadia. Lucky Edwards finds his way out of that pack for 55 yards and a touchdown. Edwards at 152 yard gain, and U Prep's a winner over a county school by a score of 30 to 25. And at number one, we go from Gates Chile playing at McQuaid, and this is Stephen Fiami passing to Miles McFadden. On the screen pass, 55 yards for the touchdown. McQuaid a winner in this game, however, by a score of 30 to 20. Volleyball is the sport of the week as we look ahead to the must-see events on the Section 5 calendar this week. This is the best of the week ahead, and if you're a volleyball fan, you have your choice of games on Thursday. On the girls' side, it's undefeated Penfield playing at invincible Pittsburgh Sutherland starts at 6.15, while on the boys' side, the long-awaited McQuaid at Victor Games at 7. That contest should be amazing. Neither team has lost. The best of a rather drab lot of football games might be this outlier. Bishop Kearney plays at Leroy Friday night. Both those teams are undefeated in the smaller class. Kickoff is at 7.30. And Saturday brings the first annual Spartan Waterfront Warrior Invitational. Cross-country meet, Greece Olympia is the host at Hamlin Beach Park. Seven races beginning at 11 a.m. Coming up, getting inside the game of field hockey. It is Webster Thomas at Pittsford Menden in our all-sport high school game of the week when the Vision Automotive Group's high school sports beat continues.
Welcome back and thanks for joining us on the Vision Automotive Group's High School Sports Beat. I'm Bill Pucko. Time now to get an inside look at the sport of field hockey and perhaps a better understanding of it. We have Webster Thomas playing at Pittsford Menden. That is our all sport high school game of the week. Field hockey is a throwback. It does not conform to many other more modern sports. There are only 12 schools that offer field hockey in section five. All the better teams are on Rochester's east side. Webster Thomas and Pittsford Menden are two of the best. We actually lost a lot of key players this past year, so we didn't really know if um, what the team dynamic would be. But um, over the course of the season, we've all connected on the field, and our season is going really well so far. We're currently undefeated. Thomas came in with just one loss and features a sister act, Captain Ali Bilo and a younger sister, Gracie, who was the team's leading scorer. You like playing with your sister? I do like playing with my sister. It's a lot of fun. We get re we're really close now, so I mean, it's a great bond that we have together. We're close because of the field hockey somewhat? Yeah, definitely. We, we weren't very close, and then once we started playing, we became like, we bonded really well. We do everything together now. It's really great. The Titans also start a senior goalkeeper who is brand new to the game. I sat with Ellie at lunch actually last year and she, we were just joking around and like, oh, you should be goalie. And I was like, oh, man, yeah, maybe. And then I did summer league and I liked it, so I continued with it. Yeah, so it's that, that's a real challenge, it seems to be picking up something like that. Uh, how did how'd it go for you? Um, I think I play a lot of sports, so you know, there's the athleticism's already there. It's just like learning how to be goalie. So I think it's it's been challenging, but also fun in the long run. Mendon got the better of Thomas in this one, playing on the only grass field used in the county. The Vikings prevailed two nothing. Mackenzie Peterson got the second of those goals. I had a couple give and goes with Rachel Lazar, who's number one, my other forward. And when I got into the circle, I hit it into the opposite corner of the goal. How much skills involved with the actual shot that produces the goal? Um, I mean, it it's kind of just like, it's like natural, I guess, because you have to just be on your toes and you have to know whether to pass it and cross it in front of the goal or if you just take, should take the shot yourself. So it just depends on the situation. Goals may be hard to come by, whistles are not. In field hockey, you can only score a goal from inside the 16-yard arch. You can't use any part of your body, just the stick and only one side of it. You can't generally raise that stick to a level past your shoulders. The result is the game can be plodding at times. I think the whistles have definitely gone down though in the past couple of years because girls are more skilled and are able to do more skills and dodges and commit less fouls, so the game does have more of a flow. Club teams have formed. There is now more of an opportunity to play the game and play at a younger age. And field hockey enjoys one big advantage over the myriad of other sports offered to girls in the fall. At the modified level in the middle schools, it is offered in the spring. Many of the varsity coaches use that opportunity to coach at both levels. When you coach at Modified, you're looking for the girls that, that want to play. And then you're looking for them to fall in love with the game because there's so many options for girls in the fall. There's soccer, there's swimming, there's cross country. And so you have to find these girls in the spring that maybe play a, that maybe a cheerleader or that, a, that maybe a soccer player and they got some talent. And so you have them come in for the fall season as a younger person. So it's helped our program a lot. We'd like to offer a big thank you to our sponsorship partners at the Vision Automotive Group. They make the sports beat possible, as do you. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you again next week.